Micah Frankel, CageMinds.com, alongside the BKFC World Champion, Christine Faria. Going to be a part of Knuckle Mania 3, but this beauty's not on the line. We've been talking a lot about Diego versus Austin. You find yourself also in a massive cross-sport matchup. First off, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm fighting. I'm in Albuquerque. I feel good. I'm... If I don't have a fight on the books, then I'm going crazy. <laughs> got to stay active. Got to have something to do. I got to. I need goal. I'm goal oriented for sure. Goal oriented. So is it almost a disappointment that it's not a title fight or does a boxing world champion from Thailand coming here to fight you make up for the lack of it not being a championship contest? A fight's a fight. Um, if I need to defend my belt, I'm going to defend my belt. To me, I'm going in there, I'm defending my belt, you know what I mean, no matter what, because if I get beat, then there's a blemish on my record. I did something wrong, I I didn't train right, I didn't prepare right, I didn't adjust right, so for me, every fight is the same. I'm a, I'm a world champion. She beats me, technically, in her mind, she can say that she's she took my belt, you know, so I, I'm approaching this and I approach everybody the same. She's a world champion. I'm super excited to be able to put down a world champion and have a, another notch on my belt, you know, um, in her. Um, she's, she's tough. She hits hard. She's tall. She's long. She's southpaw. You know, it's it's, it's going to be a tough fight. It's, I think it's going to be a super tough fight. I, she could take damage. She's, you guys will see. She's a tough girl. Second time out here in the land of enchantment, working with Sanchez Brothers Boxing Jam. Is this becoming like a second home for you? Yeah, I love Albuquerque. I love it out here. Um, it's spiritual. You know, I get there's a there's a warrior vibe out here. Um, everybody works super hard. Everybody's sweet. Everybody welcomes me. Um, they're respectful. Uh, everybody's just working class out here. It's just I, I love it. I love I love the vibe. And that gym, it feels like just a gym you would see kind of in Mexico. You walk in, there's a grit feeling to it. And they're loyal guys, you know, and that's really is in the fight business. And I'm from Vegas, so, you know, um, it's, it's a doggy, doggy dog world um, in, in any any uh, business. But the Sanchez gym, they, they really, they're very loyal people, very hardworking, very tight-knit um, they're knowledgeable. They they know what they're doing, and and it's it's like the the old school gyms, uh, old school equipment. It's just stuff that works. It's great. I don't I don't want to be in a in a gym that has everything brand new, and, and and bougie. And you need to pour my water in my mouth for me. That shit is that it's not a fighter that's that's a little bitch you know what I mean? Like we're in there. We're fighters. We we got to get dirty. We got to grind. We're we're just different human beings, and you got to put yourself in that atmosphere. And the Sanchez Brothers Gym is is that gym. BKFC 28, you were here. It couldn't have went any better to plan. Did you feel like that was a, a good ending, finishing final chapter to the rivalry with Taylor Starling? Yeah. Uh, I just had to teach the youngster, you know, a lesson. And I knew she was young and hungry and she won she wanted the title she wanted to try and, and test herself against the best and i respect that in the end you know when i'm in a camp and and i'm getting ready for you there of course there's no respect and i'm gonna do the worst to you but after um you know i feel like she learned a lesson she's gonna come up she's she's gonna she's gonna get better and she's gonna she's gonna shine in her time you know but it's my time right now it's misfit's time it's easy to assume there's not going to be that animosity, that kind of trash talk behind this fight. Do you almost miss that extra motivation being provided by an opponent? Or is it nice to just focus in on the fighter and not worry about what's going on on the social media? There's so much chaos in my head. I'm fighting every day. In, in my head, she's talking shit to me. She's trying to take what's mine. It, it's not calm in my brain. You know what I mean? You see that every time I get in the ring, it, that explosion, and that's my release. You know, I'm disciplined. I control myself. I'm respectful. I don't take anything to the streets, uh, violence or anything like that. But there's chaos in my head that I get to let out in, inside the boxing gym and, in, and on fight night. She doesn't need to talk shit to me. Nobody needs to talk shit to me. Nobody needs to pu push me. None of that. It's already happening before I get there. <laughs> we see the style, the chain, the glasses. Are you just getting more comfortable with showing more of your personality as we get further into this bare knuckle journey? Yeah, I just I'm I'm myself, you know, um I've 
when I first started, you know, it's it's hard to get behind a camera and talk, you know, uh, be on the spot, you know, people talking to me and wanting pictures and all that stuff. But I've been doing this for about 13, 15 years, you know, so I'm getting pretty comfortable, you know, just being myself and um, letting the world accept me and not, you know, being LGBTQ whatever you want to call the alphabet people, um, it, whatever, you know, it, it doesn't matter. We're, I'm an athlete, I'm a champion, and I'm here to shine and, and show hard work and dedication no matter what discrimination or what people don't like it. So I'm getting, I am getting more comfortable in my skin and, and um, realizing that it doesn't matter what other people think. And uh, as long as you're doing the right thing as much as you can and you have good intentions, you should be comfortable with yourself. Is there also some goals or some thoughts in mind of, of stepping out the forefront, like you said, with the community and having more of a purpose, being more of a, a, an outspoken leader or role model? Yeah, well, so my ending game for this, and I haven't started it yet, but I want to, for the troubled youth, you know, I, I, was, I, I did a lot of crazy things when I was young, found, you know, combat sports, and, and it helped me focus my energy and my and my aggression, my aggression, and the need for power and um, respect. You know, you can have that in a healthy way. You know, as long you just have to find it. And I found that through exercise and 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 combat sports. And when you get your ass kicked, it humbles you. You know, you realize you you can't beat the shit out of everybody. Or you learn physicality difference. You learn um, control. You learn how to control your temper. Because if you don't control your temper in the ring, you're fucked. You're gonna get your ass whooped. So. And that plays out in the real life. So there's a lot of stuff I want to do with this for the youth, um, even adults that, you know, need a direction or an outlet or um, to help themselves get disciplined. Um, that's that's my end game. You provided some incredible fireworks at BKFC 28. What do you do for a follow-up performance here in Albuquerque? I'm a sleeper. I'm, I'm sleeping this girl, period. Um, I think we're doing a catch weight of 133, so I'm not having to cut. I'm going to have more power. Um, I've been wanting this sleeper for a long time. I've been wanting to sleep somebody. I, I TKO people. I drop them. You know, I'll drop people, but I want to sleep my opponent. And uh, I think she's a lucky one. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working hard on it. Christine Faria, thank you for the time, ma'am.